Hi everyone, just a little update video. Um, I've not made one for a couple of weeks because my time has been rather compressed. What we're driving my missus to various nights out and my son over to see his girlfriend and things. Um, I'm talking of compressed. I picked up this oscilloscope yesterday at one of the local radio rallies. Um, now the seller said the trace I mean the scope was fully working but the trace was rather compressed obviously I didn't see it working and he wanted £50 for it so I wandered around the rally and looked at all the different stalls and I had it you know, in my mind to keep on going back and checking if it had gone there are actually two of these and um, I kept looking at it and walking by looking at it anyway so in, in my mind, when, when I saw the little tagger, which I've thrown away now, that said um, vertically compressed display, I, I had in my mind, well, it must be something simple because the scope's actually working. So I took a punt on it and um, did a little bit of haggling and got it for £40 instead of the 50 the seller asked for. Anyway, it's a Hewlett Packard 54601A, 100 megahertz 4 channel. And... Um, it's very very nice and it looks relatively modern but in fact it isn't it's from about 1991 um, I would say it's going to be far uh, away the most modern piece of equipment I've got but it probably isn't but it looks really modern um, so I'm going to show you inside what the fix was it's fairly easy and I practically went straight to it actually so uh, I'll switch off and I'll open her up and we'll have a look inside. Right, here's the inside of the scope and I've just switched it off so I'm going to be very, very careful about touching the back of the CRT and stuff like that. Now, um, when I opened it up I wasn't quite expecting what we have got um, this is rather like the death throes of analog CRT TVs where you have the CRT tube and not a lot else inside it it's a far cry from the tech scopes I'm used to working on and things anyway so my first consideration was uh, looking for the vertical um, section vertical display section and I just so happen to notice something saying vertical around here so with my trusty uh, PK SR meter I went round and tested some caps and um, a actual fact the first one I tested was this one here and the second one was this Panasonic oh sorry it wasn't a Panasonic let me just zoom you in a bit better so there we go, the second one I tested was this one here wait for it to focus if it ever will nope and that's 10 UF at 16 volts and that was completely open so I pulled that out tested it again and put a Panasonic 25 volt 10 UF capacitor in there this one seems absolutely fine so these are two electrolytics that are in the vertical um, part of this PCB so that's all I've done is replaced that electrolytic there now I may very well go back and replace all the other electrolytics and there's, let me get you in a bit, there's about 10 to replace on this board in total, I think 10 or 11, something like that I would think, without counting, just to make sure. I've checked where I can all the other capacitors in the power supply side and they seem absolutely fine. So that's all it was. 20p capacitor that was stopping this scope from working properly. Now let's have a look over the board itself really. Not a lot to see as I say rather like 
the last analog CRT televisions. Um, so you've got the front panel controls are all here. I assume you've got the power supply, switch mode power supply I guess down there. Nice big capacitor down there. And all the good stuff really happens on the other side of the board. I should just head back to this board a minute. This is really easy to get out. As you can see, there's three screws. One, two, and one hidden just under here, underneath this ribbon cable. All you have to do is, is unclip this. So, just pull those pegs down and carefully pull that out. And then, there's some gummy old silicon holding this board onto the tube. And you just cut off, just cut through that with a scalpel very, very delicately and slowly. And then this board just comes off. And if you undo the three screws, you can wiggle this board out without having to remove any of the actual CRT um, leads there, or, or in fact anything else. Really easy. So that, that's the inside of the scope. Um, this little fan here. That's it really. Not a lot to see. I'll flip it over and we'll have a look at the other side of the board. Alright, this is the underside of the scope. Not a lot that I can tell you about this. I'm not much into uh, silicon chips. I do see one of these Dallas non-volatile -volat memory things here. I believe they've got a battery in. Um, and I guess once the battery goes, your yeah, scope doesn't work properly anymore. Not sure, never had one of them before with a battery in it. There's a nice big chip there, that looks expensive. And all these chips have got 1991 in them. And there's a nice sticker there, made in the USA, even though the scope is actually a Hitachi scope, really. So lots of things to look at, but I'm afraid I can't tell you a lot about them. It's all SMD, my god. Imagine if any of these blew, because my, my eyes wouldn't actually see them. I'll just give you a zoom up on some of this advanced chippery. That's the Dallas memory. Oh, look at all that. That's actually gorgeous to look at, but it's almost art. But, um, afraid I don't know anything about it. <laughs> if it was valves, I might, but not this. Right. And that's the Cal Uncal switch, this one here. So I think that locks any. I'm not sure about that. I think that switch. Sorry, I'm pointing at something you can't see it. I think this switch is Uncal calibrated and it might knock, lock you out of changing any of the settings. I'm not 100% sure of that. So please disregard that comment. Right, let's. Um, Put the scope back together and give it a whirl. Oh, let's have a look at the scope now. Off on button. Fan's a little bit noisy, but um, there we go. There's the basic display. I'm going to uh, turn the grid on. Um, we're going to put a signal in it. I haven't got any of the channels switched on at the moment. Oops. Channel 1, and I've got a sine wave going into that. Um, so channel 1's on, DC coupled, bandwidth limits off. As I say, I've only had this scope for 24 hours now. So, um, I haven't really fiddled with it too much, to be honest. One thing that is good, it's got auto scale, so you just press that, and it'll auto scale what it says 
the display so if I was to put a triangle wave in well that is you know it's gone off screen and usually I'd have to turn the volts per division down just hit auto scale bang so you can do things like um, if I put the cursors in and we can measure the voltage so we've got options for peak to peak average or RMS so let's have a look at the peak to peak voltage so about 6 volts peak to peak we can have a look at the average at the same time 3.6 millivolts or sorry 360 millivolts we can have a look at the RMS time so really useful let's have a look at um, sorry RMS voltage let's look at time so we've got frequency period duty cycle so let's look at the frequency so um, we've got 6.6 .6 Hertz which is about what my function generator is set on um, we can have the period and you see the um, readings move across the bottom of the screen there and duty cycle so now we've got all the frequency measurements on screen so um, yeah that's that's about it really <laughs> you can obviously move your cursors around clear cursors put them cursors so let's have voltage so we've got frequency and voltage on there now which is what you'd normally want to see so this is going to be a really really useful tool for me I haven't played, well let's have a look, see main here you've got options for your time basis, so main delayed X, Y or roll um, so we obviously want it on want it on X, Y, that's X, Y, I've only got one one signal going into it there's your main time base, delayed time base, there's a magnification of um, of, of this back on main channel one and obviously you've got you can put in channel two turn on channel three channel channel four turn them off again so so I've not played with with it too much and I doubt I'll take it to its absolute limit just fixing old radios but as I say really useful tool um, you know, for the money it cost me and this uh, simple fix I'm really chuffed with myself right thanks for watching better turn that screen brightness down